Hey there, Dave Keller here with Market Misbehavior. One of the most important parts of my toolkit is the Relative Strength Index, or RSI. It's one of the best ways I've seen to measure price momentum. So today I'll show you how I analyze stocks and ETFs using the RSI indicator. So the technical toolkit has a lot of different uh, ways to try to measure price and trend and momentum. Charles Dow over 100 years ago really pioneered the, uh, the, the idea of technical analysis, what we consider the modern form of technical analysis, focusing on trends, right? And how you can measure the trend in a tradable asset by looking at the highs and the lows and see whether the trend in those, uh, those peaks and valleys are going up or going down. In the 1970s, Wells Wilder sort of improved on that Dow theory model uh, by uh, having a better way to measure price momentum. And he really did it focusing on the commodities market. I have a link to Wells Wilder's book in the description. What Wilder did was focus on what he uh, considered the relative strength index, which is basically a measure of price momentum. It's not a great name. So sorry, Wells Wilder. I'm not a huge fan of the name relative strength index because a lot of people inappropriately think it means relative to something else. But it actually means what is the normal movement in a price uh, and, and what is happening right now relative to what usually happens. So it's really looking for unusual price momentum to the upside or downside. Today, we'll look at a chart of the S&P 500, look at what the RSI has done over time, what Wells Wilder originally envisioned with this indicator, looking at mean reversion and how people like Connie Brown uh, and uh, Andy Cardwell and others improved on Wilder's use of RSI by looking at what we call phases in the RSI. Now, if this sort of thinking about technical analysis, technical indicators, behavioral finances of interest to you, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. Also, give the video a like if you appreciate it. We'd very much appreciate it back. Put the comment below. Do you use the RSI? Do you like it or not? What else do you use instead of the RSI? Let me know in the comments below. Let's get to the charts here. And if you look at the chart of the S&P 500 over the last three years, you'll see we go uh, back through in the last six months have been uh, quite a rotation from bearish phase of 2002 to uh, 2022 to more of a bullish phase in the last uh, four to six months. 2022, the bulk of that year was spent in a fairly established downturn. And it really wasn't until the higher low in December that we really saw that the trend was or, or had the idea that the trend was reversing. We're going to come back to that point in a little bit. But look at how the uptrend in 2021 is very contrasted by or uh, contrasted to the uh, the downtrend of 2022. Here in 2021, we have higher highs, higher lows. The moving averages are sloping upwards. Here in 2022, we're making lower highs, lower lows. The RSI is sloping downwards. The bottom of the chart here, we have the RSI or the Relative Strength Index. And again, this is essentially looking at how the, the, uh, the price is moving relative to how it usually moves. Now, what it's actually doing, and I don't want to get too much into the math, but it's basically saying what's the average up day when the S&P 500 closes high, right? So on a day, it's up 1%, right? How high does it tend to go? And on an average down day, how much for, how much lower does it tend to go? And the RSI essentially starts with the ratio of the average up day versus the average down day over a period of time. Then it uses some exponential averages to smooth out that data over time. So what it's basically doing is when the RSI goes relatively high in the range, and it ranges from zero to 100, when it's going higher, it means that the average up days are much stronger than the average down days, which which makes sense that that would happen when a price is moving up, right? When the, when the price is in an uptrend, you probably have stronger up days than down days. That's what creates that long uptrend. In a downtrend, you will have stronger down days than up days. And so that's why the RSI ratio tends to go lower. If you look at the chart of the last three years, you can see that the RSI is absolutely bound from zero to 100. So it really is like a percentage ranking. Um, if the RSI is at 50, that basically means there's an equilibrium between the average up day and the average down day, again, including the smoothing uh, techniques that I mentioned uh, earlier. So an RSI of 50 is essentially the absence of momentum, and you'll usually find that reading when the price has been sideways. So here in January of 2021, we've had a pretty good run off of the uh, congestion area here in September, October of the previous year. We make new highs in November and December. Then we sort of have this six week period where we're moving sideways. The RSI settles back down to right at 50. And what that again, what that represents is that this for this uh, particular period, it's sort of the average up and down days are even. There's an absence of strong momentum one way or the other. 
Now on stock charts, uh, it's highlighted when the RSI goes above 70. That's above this horizontal line. You can see it's shaded in green. That means it's overbought. And, and what overbought means is it's basically moved too high too quickly. The average up days are so much stronger than they normally are for this particular uh, data series that it usually you would expect a bit of a mean reversion back to the downside. And if you look at the times when the RSI is overbought, you find you usually have a brief pullback to the downside. On the other side, if the RSI is oversold, it goes below 30. That means it's gone too low too quickly, and you usually expect a mean reversion move to the upside. That's one of the basic ways to use the RSI, and that's really what Wells Wilder wrote about primarily in his book. Now, other ways we can use RSI is looking at divergences, and I've done a number of videos on this channel where I've talked about bullish momentum divergences and bearish momentum divergences. You can use that, well, do that with a lot of different uh, technical indicators, but with RSI, it's especially good. And we'll zoom into this period right here. I'm going to jump into like a two-year period to show you the end of 2021, the beginning of 2022, because there are two really good divergences to uh, highlight for you. A bearish divergence is bearish, basically where the price goes higher, like we did here in November, December, January, and where the RSI slopes lower, right? So higher prices, lower momentum, that's a bearish momentum divergence, basically meaning that the price is going higher, but the down days are more strong or the up days are a little weaker, and that usually happens at the end of a move. It's a sign of potential trend exhaustion. On the other side, if you see, uh, let's see, the uh, price going lower and the RSI sloping upwards, that's a bullish momentum divergence where the price is going down, the RSI is sloping higher. And what that basically represents is that uh, the, it's a bullish momentum divergence, that price is going down, but the momentum is, uh, is coming away from that downward move. So the first low, you have a big downside move, the RSI becomes oversold. On the second move to new lows, the RSI is not oversold. It suggests potentially a downside exhaustion point. So looking for those, uh, those bullish and, and bearish momentum divergences can be a really interesting leading indicator of trend reversal. Now let's look back. The other thing we want to talk about, which is really the core of this particular video, <clears throat> is thinking about the range of the RSI. And this is where Connie Brown and Andy Cardwell did some fantastic work, I think, building on what Wells Wilder originally envisioned for this indicator. What they were looking at is more of the entire range, because what uh, the first time I was exposed to this in Connie Brown's uh, books, uh, book Technical Analysis for the Trading Professional, I believe that's called. I'll put a link in uh, that one uh, as well in the, in the description. And what she talked about here again, which is uh, 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 related to Andy Cardwell's work uh, on the similar topic, was looking at the range. So in a bullish phase, when a trend is positive, and you can see that here, the second half of 2020 through all of uh, pretty much all of 2021, the entire range of the RSI moves higher. So the RSI never really or very rarely becomes oversold. On an upswing, you often become overbought. So instead of just you know fluctuating from overbought and oversold, the entire range bumps higher. So just looking to see when the RSI is in what I call a bullish phase can be pretty meaningful. And then you see overbought conditions as a sign of short-term uh, you know, overextended to the upside. But an RSI only needs to get down to around 40 to suggest a, a bottom. So if you think about that and look in 2020 and 2021, you can see I had a number of great signals where the RSI pulled back to 40. What that suggested was that, was that the bullish trend overall was in place. But the um, uh, but but we pulled to a short term lower end, right? A, a valley within the uh, within the uptrend or, or sort of the buy on the dips opportunity. Look at how the RSI changed going into 2021. Instead of the RSI stopping at 40, we become oversold when the stock when the market sells off. When we rally, instead of the RSI getting to the overbought condition, we only get to an RSI of 60. So in this case, the entire range of the RSI has moved lower. And this tells us again, we're now in a bearish phase and it gives you some short-term mean reversion opportunities within that downtrend. Look at what's happened most recently, right? If you go to September, you can see that the RSI was oversold and you have this really good bullish momentum momentum divergence. It's so good. I have to actually highlight it right here. You can see lower lows September into October. That's going into the October 22 low around 3,500. And you can see that the RSI is sloping upwards September and October. Oversold the first time and not oversold the second time. That bullish momentum divergence was one of the great signals in October of last year that the downtrend through most, most of 2022 was potentially ending, uh, getting to an exhaustion point. Look at what happened since then, right? We had the price rally to the 200-day moving average. The RSI stalls out at 60, which suggests 
suggests we're still probably more in a bearish phase. But look at what happened right here. When the price came back, uh, pulled back from the 200 day moving average and made that higher low in uh, December, you have this pattern the higher low around 3,800, and look how the RSI doesn't get below 40. That was one of the great signs going into year end, that potentially this was a bottoming process that was emerging. And what you want to see is see if we follow through to the upside. What's happened in the last couple weeks here as we, uh, as we record this in uh, early February of 2023, is we've made a new swing high by getting above uh, this level right here, which is the, uh, we'll call it the 4,100 level. We've now broken above that and are testing that from above, which is a classic breakout pattern. You can see that the RSI touched 70, which says two things. Number one, we're most likely now in a bullish phase by the fact that the RSI has gotten to 70, but also we're probably in a short-term mean reversion situation. So the long-term trend now most, most likely positive, but in the short term, we most likely pull back. So what's interesting is you have this situation similar to what you did in August of last year, which is the price has rallied. We've actually made a new swing high, but the RSI becomes overbought. The most important thing I would argue looking forward for the S&P 500 is to see if we get another pullback, to see if we make a higher low above 3,800, and to see if the RSI remains above 40 on that pullback. If all those things happen, that would give me great confidence that this is yet another pullback, a viable pullback within a longer term uptrend that really started in October of last year. That's it. That's the RSI indicator looking through the S&P 500 over the last three years, thinking about its basic purpose of, of measuring price momentum by looking at average up days versus average down days. Wells Wilder's foundational work thinking about price momentum and how we can apply it to stocks and ETFs. Then how Connie Brown and Andy Cardwell built on that work, thinking about the RSI phases, also things like divergences that help you understand a little more of the nuance behind price momentum, what it tells you about the characteristics of the uh, chart you're looking at. Most important, Importantly, as I mentioned, if the S&P pulls back, which I think is likely from uh, from this uh, breakout level above 4,100, look to see if we make a higher low above 3,800 and if the RSI can hold 40. If that's the case, then that would suggest based on, based on Charles Dow's work, based on Wilder's RSI and those improvements by Brown and Cardwell that we're most likely still in a bullish phase. This sort of thinking about technical analysis, technical indicators, and behavioral investing is of interest to you. Won't you subscribe to my channel? It'd be great to have you along this journey. Also, give the video a like if you appreciate it. We'd very much appreciate that back. I'm Dave Keller with Market Misbehavior. Be well and stay safe. We'll talk to you again soon.